In this video, we'll describe the design, development, and operation of a digital readout integrated circuit for use in an infrared focal plane array. It all starts with the concept. This is a single die of the Oxygen Digital Readout Integrated Circuit, or DROIC for short. Now let's walk through the steps to get from concept to this chip in my hand. Schematics are captured in a schematic editor. Designers perform simulations to optimize the designs to meet the project requirements. After a design has been captured in schematics, it is translated into polygons in a layout editor. These colorful geometries represent the different layers that make up the circuit elements, like transistors, capacitors, resistors, and interconnect. Every die of the oxygen droid contains millions of transistors and a myriad of metal routes. This ROIC has pads along the left and the right. The pixels integrate charge from the detectors and then the analog voltage is read down each column and converted by column parallel ADCs. The digital data is then read out through the high-speed serializer on the right. Here's the layout of a single 8 micron pixel of the oxygen ROIC. Here we see the topmost metal on the chip along with the tungsten plugs that are exposed on the surface of the die. Tiny little indium bumps are deposited on these plugs in each pixel and then a detector material is flip chip bonded to the oxygen ROIC. The process of creating a sandwich with the ROIC and a detector material to form a focal plane array or FPA is called hybridization. CAD software is used to confirm that the polygons drawn in layout match the circuits captured in schematics. The layout is then taped out to a multi-billion dollar foundry for fabrication, which usually takes a few months. ROICs arrive in wafer form from US-based fabrication facilities. At this point, newly designed chips are mounted into test packages for thorough design verification testing, while more mature designs undergo production screening on wafer probers. Wafer maps identify which chips are suitable for integration into cameras based on their test data. Specialist companies then process the wafers, dicing them, and hybridizing the ROICs with photosensitive detector material to form focal plane arrays, or FPAs. Common infrared detector materials, typically 2, 6, or 3, 5 semiconductor compounds, tend to work well only far below room temperature. For this reason, FPAs are often cooled to their optimal operating temperatures using cryogenic systems. This pore fill doer allows for camera operation down to near the boiling point of liquid nitrogen at 77 Kelvin or around minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. A coated IR transmissive window like this germanium one will allow thermal radiation to reach the FPA, commonly known as the mid-wave infrared or MWIR band. This is an MWIR video stream with full online processing applied. Brighter regions represent areas in the scene emitting more thermal radiation so that more current flows into the ROIC in these regions at the image plane. The raw video output from the ROIC, on the other hand, does not look this nice. As seen here, there are some features that must commonly be accounted for by an image processing and viewing system. First, hybridization is not always perfect, and this can result in unconnected, or dead, pixels. For the purpose of this demonstration, we are using an imager that has a significant density of such pixels in the upper right of the array. These pixels can be identified by their lack of optical flux, and online algorithms can be used to replace them with neighboring pixel data. Second, the product of the optical intensity profile with any response non-uniformity in the detector array and in the ROIC leads to noticeable spatial patterning in the image. This can be removed by performing a non-uniformity correction, or NUC. The most common two-point NUC uses frames captured with a flat field source, such as a black body, at two different temperatures to correct for the offset and gain non-uniformities on a pixel-by-pixel -pixel basis. Once the NUC is applied, the patterning is no longer evident. Display gain and offset controls can be used to set the desired contrast, and tools like automatic gain control can stabilize the display range against wide changes in signal. Simple gain and offset variations are not the only sources of image non-uniformity. Deviations from a linear response of the imaging system to changes in flux, known as non-linearity, also results in non-uniformity since it renders a two-point nuke ineffective. Using this ROIC built-in self-test mode, we can use a voltage ramp to measure the analog to digital response curve of the column ADCs. This line represents the output code of a particular ADC on the y-axis as a function of voltage, which increases across the rows on the x-axis. Similarly, the responses of all columns can be seen in the gradient image to the right. This transfer function appears quite linear, resulting in the nice image seen previously. If a calibration error results in a much less linear transfer function, the image quality is noticeably degraded. This can be seen in the apparent banding in the test gradient image. 
as well as in the IR scene itself. Other effects like frame-to-frame -frame temporal noise in each pixel must be accounted for to produce high-quality imagery. This is done by minimizing the noise entering the system and by averaging techniques like oversampling. The relationship between an imaging system's capacity, the largest amount of light it can collect, and its sensitivity, the smallest amount of light it can detect, is known as its dynamic range. When an infrared scene consists of multiple objects at a wide range of temperatures, the signal strength may span several orders of magnitude. This scene has a very hot soldering iron at 600 degrees Fahrenheit. At the current integration time of 240 microseconds, this hot item is well imaged, showing fine details on its surface. If the integration time is increased to 6.4 milliseconds, interesting features in the background that were invisible are now apparent. However, the longer integration time has now caused the soldering iron to be completely saturated in the image. We are observing the dynamic range limitations of this system. Advanced ROICs have special features that allow the dynamic range to be extended beyond its nominal level. This oxygen ROIC allows for two different integration times to be used on two intermeshing checkerboard subsections of the imaging array. When both the 240 microsecond and the 6.4 millisecond integration times are used concurrently in the checkerboard pattern, the image is much improved due to the increase in the dynamic range. Near the soldering iron, one set of pixels can be seen to image properly, while the other intermeshing set appears saturated. This image can be further processed to smooth away the prominent checkerboard appearance. This simple implementation uses pixel value thresholds to choose which integration time to use in each region of the image. In hot regions near the soldering iron, the short integration time data is used, while the long integration time data is used in the cooler regions. Cross-population interpolation is used to replace saturated or starved pixels where necessary. In some cases, more sophisticated tone mapping algorithms can be used to stitch the responses of the high and low integration time populations to each other creating seamless boundaries between very hot and very cold regions of the image. While this spatially multiplex mode does sacrifice some positional resolution for increased dynamic range, the effect can be minimal if considering the minimum image plane feature size of this optical system due to diffraction.